All right, guys, um, here with a video today, and um, this is actually in response to a question I got on email, and it's a it's a subject that I've never actually tackled before, and uh, so this video is going to be called, Is It Okay to Back Out of a Project? And um, I thought it was very interesting, and it was a, it was a nice letter um, from Asia, who gave me permission to kind of read some of this. I'm going to basically, um, I think I'm just, uh, instead of re really reading it, I, I think I'm just going to kind of um, paraphrase because it's it's quite lengthy. But basically, um, she is out of school for three years and working professionally, working on some of her own projects. And um, she took on a project that is out of the genre that she's working in. Um, she's, she's working more in action fantasy and this one was more, she, as she describes it, gorish, um, with a darker style. And she thought, she thought she would take it cause it would, um, stretch her as an artist and, and give her some, uh, new things to work on and probably, um, expand her portfolio. But she's at a point now where she's realizing that it is the perfectly wrong project for her and she's just thinking that um it's she really wants out and she doesn't really go into <clears throat> excuse me all of the the reasons why she wants out um but i think that all of us have probably been in a situation like this where we've accepted a project from for me the most of the ones that i've accepted in the past that have been bad for me were ones that I did for friends or family um, or acquaintances that just kind of cornered me and asked me to do something and I didn't really I wasn't really practiced in saying no so I think there's a lot of reasons why you can actually find yourself in this situation and a lot of you watching could probably relate to um, this this uh, feeling and you know this situation but also um, probably some of the things that I'm going to go through on my advice to what to do when you find yourself in this situation. So basically, um, the, the first thing that I, I thought of when I, when I think about this, cause I, I actually made a video of, um, the, the story of how I actually lost my rep and it was from backing out of a project. And I will definitely link that in the description below. Um, because it was a, it was a humdinger of a back out. <laughs> um, and in general, I mean, I, I don't think that anybody's going to say, yeah, it's good to constantly back out of projects. So I think overall, I think the knee jerk reaction to this question is no, don't, don't back out of, of projects. And I think in general, that's probably, um, pretty good advice, but I think that the answer is a lot more nuanced than that. And this, each situation is going to be just a little bit different, but first and foremost, I think, you know, this is your life. This is your time. Um, and no one has the right to it. It's not like you're, you know, once you've agreed to do a project, you are a slave to that project. Now there could be contractual, uh, things that you signed up for. For instance, maybe you accepted money, um, upfront. And if you back out, you'll, it's probably contractual that you'll have to pay that back. I don't know what your specific situation is in this one. I would say for most illustrators, most illustrators don't get paid up front for most of the work they're doing. So that's probably not um, always a factor, probably not often a factor, but it could be. But this is your, I mean, like people quit jobs every day and, you know, they're under contract and um, illustration really isn't any different. I think that, um, I think that backing out of a project that you've accepted is your right but I think that um, the, the better way to look at this question isn't necessarily, you know, is it, am I allowed to do it or is it, is it right to do or is it wrong to do? It's more just figuring out the pros and cons of, of both choices, you know, staying in it as a choice and jumping out of it as a choice. And I think you should, everybody's going to have a different list of pros and cons, but um, some of the, some of the negatives that I would worry about would be, and you're probably worried about is, um, you know, are you going to ruin your chances of ever being hired again? I, I've, I've heard this from, from people before 
as if all the clients in the world are, are like linked up on some sort of database where if you mess up with one, they're going to let all the others know. That's just not going to happen. And we, you know, I think we feel when we start out that uh, it's a, it's a really small community and some illustration communities are fairly small and word does get around and that is a concern. Uh, but in general, um, you know, your reputation, uh, if you're, if you're, if your normal is to start projects and finish them, having one or two, uh, you know, I, in my opinion, isn't, isn't really going to hurt you unless for some reason it becomes really high profile on social media because you did something really wrong or or something was really controversial about it i i'm i'm thinking about right now i'm thinking about uh and this isn't really a client that backed out but there was recently a um, author who went on social media and complained about the cover art that he received for one of his books and that went viral and, uh, you know, bad behavior tends to do that. So I, I don't think that you have to worry about that so much with backing out of a project. Um, another, another con is, and this kind of goes along with it, is, you know, the client is probably not going to have nice things to say about you to his or her peers. And so uh, in, you know, the word, there probably will be, a, there might be some clients that might have been potential clients that you might not work with. Um, because yeah, I mean like the, the client's probably not going to be very happy. Um, they're going to be upset. Um, another con obviously is, you know, you're not going to be getting the money. So I don't know what your financial situation is and how bad you need the money. Sometimes, you know, we take jobs and we, we stick through them and we finish them that we don't really want to do, but we're doing it. Basically the, the main motivator is the money. Sometimes hopefully for illustrators you know the motivation is one you love the art and two you're getting paid for it so you know you're getting paid to do something that you love i mean that's the that's the the um the ideal but in in the real world a lot of jobs we we take on are um you know just to get us down the road financially a little bit and so um you know i don't know what your situation is there um and the another con would be that you you wouldn't be expanding into this area you wouldn't have a published piece for your portfolio that's more of a of a uh, concern the newer you are at illustration the 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 longer you've had your career the less that becomes um a factor but it is something that you might you know factor in and you know you're going to lose this um the pros you know you're going to have this weight lifted off your shoulders and if it's stressing you out i mean stress I really believe stress is a killer, and I think scientifically, medically, they're they're proving that stress is, um, you know, can lead to all sorts of um, physio physiological problems in your body. And so, you know, if it's really going to stress you out, then uh, it might be that that alone might be worth it just to say I, I can't do this, you know. And I, I'm sure there's a fair amount of stress um, staying in or just stressing over this decision, you know, but, um, uh, you know, there, to me, there's nothing worse than working on a piece that I hate. Uh, and the, and the reason for that is, you know, if you're doing a menial task, if I'm, if I'm washing dishes, if I'm mowing the lawn, if I'm digging a ditch, if, you know, if I'm, if I'm, you know, back in the day, I used to hang drywall, and uh, I used to mud and tape the drywall and I, I worked on decks and I worked as a carpenter's helper. And and there were days where I, I, I kind of liked what we were working on. There were days that I hated it, days where we were working out in the rain, um, days we were working on, you know, 100 degree weather and outside, you know, sweating. And um, but at the same time, my mind could travel to where I was going to be on the weekend or what I was going to be doing. And, um, and so, you know, you would just pound through it, but your mind could float off somewhere else. When you're working on art that you hate, you, your mind has to be present in that hell that you're in, um, in the moment, you know, you cannot escape it because you need your mind to think about that artwork. And so to me, there's nothing worse. I'd rather be digging a ditch. I'd rather be doing something outside than working on a, a, a piece of art that I hate. 
So I'm very sympathetic to the idea of backing out of something that you really don't want to do. Um, do I think it's good to get yourself in the situation? Absolutely not. Do I think it's good to, you know, set a precedent of backing out? No. Um, do I think there's merit in staying in? Yeah, you will learn, you know, toughing it out will actually help you be more judicious on the jobs you take in the future. So there is a, you know, that that would go on the, the plus side too, right? Um, that you're learning. Um, oh, what's another pro? Um, you could be spending time creating art that you really want to create that could potentially lead to other future projects. Um, and so when we, you know, when we take our, our, uh, artistic creativity and we, we give it to our clients, you know, hopefully it's, it's, it's furthering what we're trying to do. If it's not, then that's time that's kind of lost as far as, as far as, uh, finding new work. Um, uh, another pro is, is I think that you learn, you know, how to deal with, with these uncomfortable situations because, you know, uh, and I'm projecting this because it's not in your letter, but for a lot of people, I would say the, the backing out process is, is in some cases is harder than just sticking with it. And so even though they would rather back out the, um, the idea of the confrontation with the client is keeping them in. And, um, I think that if you do, back out, you will teach yourself that you can handle those kinds of stressful, um, negotiations and confrontations, um, in a, in a positive way, you know? So, um, you know, um, yeah. So the, you know, those, that's kind of my list of pros and cons. Um, and I think that you have to figure out, you know, which direction you're going to go, but I, I don't think that, um, you know, that, I, I got the, I got the gist from this question that it's you know is it is it morally wrong or right I don't think that you can say it's morally wrong or right um, again you know you're not a slave once you once you agree to something you know you I mean the the, the contract is there to um, to basically be a document that that sets up the rules for that contract, but nowhere in the document that you sign, if, if you signed a contract, does it say, um, you know, we will take your firstborn if you back out of this contract. So, I mean, like, I mean, I, I, I see it as an, as a definite option that way. Now, if you are, when you are, um, if you do just decide to back out, um, here's some advice that I would say, you know, in, in dealing with it is, um, I would explain to the client, you know, that you should have, you feel like you should have said no in the beginning, but that you felt like you really wanted to grow with this project or whatever your reasons were. Um, and that that's why you got in over your head. But once you, um, you, you dug into it, you really started to realize that it, it wasn't for you and that you weren't going to be able to do a good job on it. And that, that that as the client, you will probably be happier working with someone who really can treat your project with respect, who really can fall in love with it and do a good job for you. Um, and make sure I like, like the client could, and, and, and I wouldn't say most likely would, but there's a really good chance that the client's going to go negative and get upset and get angry. And I think you have to understand that, you have gone through the grief process over time. You've wrestled with this emotionally. And when the client hears about it, they're going to be going through the grief process of, you know, knowing like, oh crap, now I'm going to have to find somebody else. And this isn't going to be easy. And this is going to, or this is going to blow my, my deadline. You know, this could, uh, could, could, there's a, there's a, this is going to be hard on me. And so as they're going through the grief process, they're going to, there's a good chance they're going to take it out on you. And I would say the, the one thing that you probably should do is, um, is take the abuse <laughs> if it comes your way, because you're, you're initiating this and you know, they didn't ask for you to say yes and then say no. So I, I, 
personally, I feel like it's their right to get upset. Now, it's it's not their right to abuse you, to get abusive. So it's it's their right to be angry. It's not their right to be abusive. If they became abusive, then I would I wouldn't uh, I would just sever the ties. I wouldn't I wouldn't continue communicating with them. I'd just you know walk away and just ignore you know anything that they sent that's that's hateful or angry. Because I, I think that um, it's it's interesting what will happen if you go negative um, and you write something in an email or something. They could post that online and say, look what this jerk illustrator is doing. And then look what this jerk says to me, you know, and get you caught up in this whole thing that, uh, you know, and they're not going to they're not going to talk about what they did to you. They're only going to uh, expose you as a, as a bad person, quote unquote. Right. So just take the high road. And just let them vent, let them be angry um, if they are. Um, some, some won't. Some, some will um, understand. And, you know, some might even thank you for not going through with a project that you hate and not doing a good job on it. I mean, like that, they should, that's really the mindset they should be in, right? Um, so, yeah, make sure they, they know it's not personal, um, that, but that it's really like, as an artist, you know, you you pride yourself in the work that you do and you want to do the best work and things like that. And you don't want to do a bad job and you just feel like this is taking you in the wrong direction. Um, yeah. So now another thing that I would be aware of is that, uh, one of the stages of, of the grief process is bargaining and they actually might try to start bargaining to pay you a little bit more money. And, you know, I would say this, um, uh, you know, all of us have a price. I don't care how bad the job is, you know, like, let's say, uh, for Asia, for this job that you're doing, you know, let's say you're the budget that you're being paid is $3,000 or I, I have no idea how big the project is. Maybe that, maybe it's 10,000, maybe it's a thousand. I, I have no idea, but whatever it is, it's obviously not worth it to you to do it for the current price. What if the price were doubled? Now this is not likely to happen, but but there is a chance that that some bargaining could happen, and there could be an offer of a little bit more money. But I guess what I'm trying to say is everyone has a price, and um, I think it's important before you turn this project down, before you tell them no, that you should know what your bottom line is on price, so that if they did come back with a lot more money you would still know if the answer is no or if the answer is then yes. Um, you know, you don't want to get, you don't want, you don't want them to throw a few more hundred dollars your way. And then you're like, Oh crap. Now they're, they're going to pay more. Well, now I have to do it. And then you, you agree, you get off the phone or you, you agree on an email. And then days later, you're like, I don't even want to do it for a couple hundred dollars more, you know? So you, you need to know, <laughs> You know, and, and go through these imaginary scenarios. What if they offered me 500 bucks more? What if they offered me $1,000 more? You know, whatever that would be. Know where your bottom line is, where no is. Um, and know where yes is. I mean, that's the same, same thing. You know, like if they came back with enough money. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't really know anybody. I, I, I might know a few illustrators who, you know, money is not really an issue anymore simply because of how much they have. Um, but I think for most of us, if the, if the, if the money was right, we would almost, you know, suffer through anything. Right. So, um, so that's something to think of. And, uh, you know, another one, and I don't know if you're planning to, to call this person or email them, but I would email them. Um, that way you can collect your thoughts. You can organize your thoughts. You can, you can you could put it out there um, and you can say every single thing you want to say um, on a phone call. If you get nervous, you might actually forget. Um, but if there is going to be a call, I would make notes. So I do that a lot. If I'm going to have a call that might be um, might involve some negotiation or something like that, it might involve, um, you know, a lot of um, a lot of different moving pieces and moving pieces of information. I want to, I don't want to miss anything. So make yourself some notes. So that's basically, um, my advice for, um, turning down a project. I do think that it, there are times when, um, it's okay to do. And I, 
I just think that they should be rare in your career. Um, I can, I, I have, I have turned down, I have backed out of projects less than, than five times in my whole career. I can really only think of two right now. Um, but I'm sure there's, there might be a few more. Um, but, but yeah, so, and that's in, you know, 25, 26 years. So it should be a very rare thing, but it, but I can tell you that it has made me uh, much better at evaluating um, a, an assignment when it comes in and really going through the process of a lot of discovery. So I will send a client a lot of uh, emails. They'll send, they'll send their initial email and inevitably it won't contain enough information to make me comfortable to just say yes to this job. So I will just start writing out a response email with, with lots of questions. I want, I really want to know, um, you know, who I'm working with and what I'm going to be expected to do and exactly, um, how hard and how complicated the artwork is going to be and how much freedom and flexibility I'm going to have, uh, with creating that artwork. And I mean, just, just all sorts of, of questions like that, you know, um, and I, I, that's helped me avoid um, getting into these these problems. The times that I've gotten into them are where I've just been, you know, yeah, I'll do it, you know, and not really understanding exactly what the project is and how hard it's going to be and what the subject matter is going to be. Um, and any any design parameters or things that, you know, could crop in, could creep up, I want to know it all. And that way I can make my calculations. I can, I can evaluate the budget and go, yeah, is this worth it? You know, do I need to ask for more money? I mean, all sorts of things like that. And, um, man, it's, it just makes your life so much easier to avoid these problems up front, but you have to go through these in order to get the experience so that you can, um, only work for the clients that you really want to work for. So anyway, I wish you all of the success in either staying with this project or backing out. I hope this helps other people and as always do not subscribe to this channel unless you want to see more videos like this.